Hello everybody, my name is Matt Gorlick and I'm here to talk to you guys about Time-Based Community Edition. I'm a product manager of digital asset technology with EPAM Systems. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be here. Um, before we get started, I'd just like to say, uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to interrupt me. Um, you know, raise your hand and we'll get to it during the presentation. I really don't feel like doing a monologue right now. So if anyone has any questions, please don't hesitate to, uh, to ask them as they come up. So in order to understand what we're talking about today, um, I'm going to start with a quick overview of what time base is, talk about it in the context of our uh, commercial software, and then we're going to talk about why it's important to, uh, to bring it into the open source community. And uh, hopefully, if we have time, we'll go through some real demonstrations of this all running on my machine. So what is time base? TimeBase is our time series data warehouse and messaging middleware or streaming system developed by the EPAM Real-Time Computing Lab, uh, which is formerly known as Deltix. Deltix is a product company, so we've, uh, you know, we sell licenses to various financial institutions, banks, hedge funds, etc. And we use TimeBase as a foundational piece of pretty much all of our, um, all of our commercial implementations. Um, TimeBase was designed with a few key features in mind, uh, key paradigms. Those are basically, uh, we needed to make sure that it was able to process a large volume of real-time and historical data simultaneously, massive amounts of data um, quickly, and we needed to make sure that it, uh, that it has a wide variety of APIs that allow you to quickly integrate it into your existing platforms. So for the past 15 plus years, TimeBase has been a core piece of our technological offerings. Um, and over the past few years, we have been working to make it a standalone product that we are now sharing with the open source community. And uh, we're really excited about this because it allows us to uh, handle a wide variety of new challenges and so to speak, expand our horizons. So aggregate, analyze, act is one of our core mantras at Deltix, or now the EPAM Real-Time Computing Lab. We believe that all financial solutions start with processing data, and TimeBase is the, and that's why we built TimeBase from the ground up to handle our time series database needs. So uh, the key point here that I want to make is that uh, time base allows you to very quickly and seamlessly go from historical to real-time data processing. Uh, that means that the strategies that you de design in Quant Office can be deployed in Quant Server without needing to rewrite the code to work in a real-time landscape. Um, it's just a few flags that tell the engine, you know, we're switching. That we're switching over to a uh, real-time regime, so uh, time base allows you to, to make that happen. Um, this is by no means an exhaustive list of the use cases that we've handled, but this design paradigm of switching from historical to real-time context allows us to uh, handle a wide array of, of different tasks. Now. Um, Deltix is definitely best known for our quantitative analysis, um, our ab ability to let you build your models, backtest them, and deploy them in real time. But using, um, using TimeBase, we've also built streaming platforms, um, massive data aggregation, uh, data warehouses, and things of that nature. The key point I want to highlight here, uh, in addition to the use cases, is what kind of data can go into time base. So on the left here, you see pricing data and trade data. Of course, that's you know standard market data. But we allow you to basically define your message structure in such that you can also store corporate actions, Twitter data, and really any type of data at all that includes a timestamp. Um, and a symbol. And I'll show exactly why this is interesting and, and important a little bit later, but that's just something to, uh, to think about for the time being. So what kind of applications have clients built using our, using our software? Um, again, this is definitely not exhaustive, but, um, but it's going to be used to illustrate a point um, that historical data, uh, you know, we 
we've built TCA platforms, um, which obviously relies on historical data to compare your order execution to various benchmarks, you know, TWAPs, VWAPs, uh, et cetera. Back testing, of course, relies on historical data to test your models. Risk measurement, risk measurement and trade surveillance, again, can be done using historical data to, to, to build your rules, your, your rule sets, rather, um, and then apply them to a real-time context. So the fact that on the right-hand side you see a lot of overlap with the left-hand side, that's not a coincidence. That was done by design. Um, you know, front office risk management, of course, that has to be done in real time. Uh, executing the algos that you have built, again, uses real-time data. Um, and the point here is that the simultaneous use of historical and real-time data is a difficult problem to solve, um, and TimeBase seeks to bridge that gap. And how we do that is using our moving window concept. So let me, let me start by basically explaining that TimeBase was built to take in a lot of data rapidly build up a stream of data and digest it and give it to you in chunks. So as soon as data comes in, and we're talking uh, you know, an order of magnitude of millions of messages per second, as soon as data comes in, by definition, it becomes historical data. So these streams build up and TimeBase has this concept of a moving window where we, can, where we provide this data in blocks that can be measured in seconds or minutes or months, years, it doesn't matter, but it's all chunks. And with TimeBase, we've built, we've also built our real-time math libraries that, can, that are optimized for time series data that allow you to perform rapid calculations across this data set. Um, so, you know, I don't want to spend too much time uh, going through all of the, the features of TimeBase, but you know the key points here, uh, it's a real product used in production over the past 15 years, um, you know, so we know it's reliable, we know it works. Um, we've built APIs in a wide variety of languages, Java, C Sharp, um, you know, Python, and web APIs for use in web applications. Um, this allows us to, you know, developers to uh, download our product and immediately integrate it with whatever platforms they currently currently use. And finally, the data modeling it allows you to uh, to define your classes, your your data structures, such that we can store any form of time series data. Uh, the next few slides are going to be more technical uh, in nature, and to be honest, I don't want to spend too much time on these uh, for two reasons. The first is that all of this and a lot more is explained in detail at our website, timebase.info, uh, but more importantly, I want to really try to focus on uh, showing you how all this stuff works rather than just telling you, um, but you know, the key takeaway here is how data goes into our platform and how it goes out, um, so you see that we can take in a wide variety of different uh, data feeds, you know, customer data, uh, and on the right hand side you see like a .NET client, Java client, uh, and time-based administrator for example. This is just to illustrate that we have a wide variety of uh, technical capabilities built into time-based to allow you to process the data in whatever way you want. Um, you know, this kind of recaps a lot of what we've, we've talked about already. Um, you know, we provide a wide variety of APIs. Um, and I want to draw some special attention to the right-hand side here, uh, the bullet points there. You know, in a few minutes, I'm going to show you a demo of this running on my laptop uh, with the data connectors using uh, Docker images. Um, so, you know, commodity hardware, um, no need for, you know, big data centers or anything like that to, to run a simple instance of time base. Um, this slide outlines how data is stored in time base. Um, you know, so we've got our uh, traditional uh, databases, tables, we have streams. A stream consists of many messages and each message is defined by a schema. You can define that schema. We have, you know, a few 
standard ones built in for L1 messages, L2 messages, market data, you know, like that. But you define the schema and I'll show you exactly how this looks. Um, but the point is it's designed to handle any type of time series data that you want. You can define what it's supposed to look like and write a connector to publish that data into TimeBase. Uh, we also have a query language. Um, it's called QQL, quant query language, and it's optimized for time series data. So it might not be as robust as you know, some SQL-like query languages, but uh, it allows you to perform rapid calculations over a set of time series data, and I'll show you how that all looks in a few minutes as well. So getting data into TimeBase, for that we use data connectors. Um, you know, we've built over 100 uh, Steltics, but now that we've put this in the open source community, we hope to see a lot more uh, connectors being built for a wide variety of, of use cases. Today, we're going to be focusing on our crypto connectors, um, but it really, you know, I'm, I hope that I'm able to illustrate that it's, it's really designed to be able to take in any data that you want. Um, these data connectors can be written in a variety of different languages, um, and the aggregator is used to manage this set of data connectors and ensure that the right data goes into the right streams. Uh, this slide talks about some of the performance metrics. Um, you know, these were taken a few years ago, so they might be a little bit out of date, but the main topics I want to highlight are uh, that the order of magnitude, um, you know, messages are uh, measured in the order of a million messages per second. Um, and while the uh, performance doesn't quite scale linear linearly, um, it does scale with the amount of hardware that you, that you push at it. So 1.8 million messages per second on one thread or 5.5 uh, million messages per second with four threads. Um, and also, uh, you know, I want to highlight that latency um, for these, for time-based streams is measured in the order of microseconds, so we expect sub-100 microsecond uh, latencies for the messages that we process. Um, you know, th th as I said, this, this uh, system was originally built to handle high-frequency trading use cases, so, um, you know, we needed to be able to backtest and process in real time millions of messages per second. That's why we built this, and that's why you see the performance metrics that you do. So just to recap what we've spent the past few minutes talking about, um, time-based single API for historical and real-time contexts. This is different than you know, most traditional databases, which of course allow you to dump hundreds of millions of messages into, uh, into a database and perform historical analysis on them. We wanted to make sure that you can rapidly transition that from that to real-time use cases. And our polymorphic class support, our, uh, our message schemas allow you to handle any type of business logic that you need. So, you know, in addition to standard L1, L2 messages, we can also uh, support pretty much anything with a timestamp that you throw at it. So. Now that we understand what, uh, what TimeBase is and what it does, let's talk a little bit about the history of, of TimeBase and what we're all doing here. And that's to talk about how it, uh, how it can fit into the open source landscape. So, you know, it's been a foundational piece of our commercial software for over a decade, but over the past three years, we've really pushed to make it a standalone product. And that started with, um, with this dockerization, um, with making it available to, uh, to, to run on cloud platforms. So, you know, long gone are the days where people want you to deploy on-prem. Um, most of our clients now run in the cloud. So uh, Kubernetes plus Docker allows us to deploy on, uh, you know, GCP, Azure, whatever, AWS. Last year, we finally released TimeBase to the open source community with the help of Finos to, uh, um, as TimeBase Community Edition. And you know, we really hope that, uh, that this effort, um, as well as you know, releasing the data connectors, um, the open source data connectors, we really hope that this leads to, leads to an additional adoption of TimeBase as a viable uh, time series data warehouse. Uh, people use it and um, 
you know, we, we start facing new challenges and, and improving, improving the software. We know that we can do financial data really, really well. We don't know what we don't know, and um, that's kind of our goal here, to, uh, to, to see how we fare in the you know, IoT landscape or other, uh, other applications. So, um, so that's why we, we spent all this time and energy to publish it to the open source community. Um, again, you know, just want to highlight that I'm about to be running all of this on my Windows 10 laptop using Docker Compose, uh, using Docker images. You don't need anything fancy. Um, you can just run it. And finally, uh, these are a few different links that you can uh, look up for reference. Everything that I'm going to be showing in a couple minutes can be, uh, can be just downloaded from, from GitHub ran, and you, know, you can start running it in minutes. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the slides. Now let's, uh, let's get to the fun part. Um, I'm gonna start by just launching the software and then I'm gonna pause for a minute for, for questions, you know, cause as I mentioned, um, Timebase does handle both, uh, his, you know, it, it processes real time data and handles historical data. I wanna give it a couple minutes to, um, you know, to populate some, some data so we can look at some of the stuff that we've built. So uh, I guess, does anyone have any questions about what we've talked about so far? Quick yes. You talked about uh, Quant Server and Quant Office. Mm -hmm. Are those open as well? They are not, no. They're, yeah, they're part of our commercial, um, commercial product offering. So yeah, we have you know, a lot of different products. Um, the, some math libraries are open source, but really time base is, uh, is what we're focusing on with the open source community right now. Great question. Um, so right now, um, let's actually take a look. Um, we're going to be looking at our uh, at our crypto connectors at Timebase uh, Community Edition plus crypto connectors. It's a little too small. Let me zoom in. Um, and I'm going to show basically how we aggregate data from a wide variety of different venues. Um, our open source connectors that we've published uh, right now will show Coinbase, Kraken, uh, BitMEX, a couple others. I believe we have 15 or 16 connectors in, in open source right now. Um, so I'm showing you basically the uh, configuration for our, um, for our crypto connectors. Um, that's a that's a good segue to um, basically talk about what uh, what files you get when you download the repo. So uh, here I've got um, you know I've got the three repos that I that I linked in in resources: time based tutorial, Grafana plugin, and crypto connectors. Uh, these are the only three folders that I'm going to be uh, be referencing. So everything I'm about to show is all freely downloadable, um, and you can get started with it immediately. Um, the, uh, the Docker Compose file that you get when you clone our repo, uh, to those of you familiar with Docker, basically it's uh, you know, the collection of different, uh, different images that we publish. Um, the ones that, you're, that I'm gonna be showing today, the core time-based server, the uh, time-based web administrator, um, the crypto connectors repo, the configuration of which I just, I just showed, Grafana, and a, uh, and a Jupyter Hub demo as well. Um, the purpose of the Grafana and Jupyter demos is to highlight uh, how quickly and easily you can integrate Timebase into um, you know, open source projects. It's, uh, you know, our APIs make that a, um, you know, a, a trivial process. So yeah, uh, back to the connectors. Um, you know, let's just pick one to talk about. Uh, the Coinbase connector is gonna write everything into a stream called Coinbase. We're going to indicate that we want to grab 20 levels of, of the book. Um, we're going to specify the URL, tell it what type of messages to capture. And here we see a pretty interesting, uh, interesting capability, and that's our mapping. So, you know, as uh, as we've learned, different crypto venues have completely different symbologies. Um, you know, Kraken, BTC USD, Bitcoin USD might be. Here at Kraken, it's XBT slash USD. At other venues, it might be BTC dash USD. With, uh, with Timebase and with the aggregator, we have uh, 
method to basically unify all of these all of these streams and publish them using one unified symbol. That's how you define it in our uh, in our connectors example. Now that uh, you know, I've given it a couple minutes. I should have enough info to uh, to really start showing um, the you know the nitty gritty. So time-based dot info. This is just our uh, you know our documentation site. It covers our um, our enterprise edition as well as our community edition. Um, we talk a little bit about the you know the architecture, the data structures, you know everything you need to know to get started using TimeBase. Uh, if I didn't explain it, it's going to be here on our website. Um, so I highly recommend you check it out. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get started. So um, our TimeBase admin tool get it right out of the box with our open source uh, technology. On the left hand side, you see all of our, uh, the data streams that we define um, you know, using our connectors configuration. Um, if we look at any, uh, any stream schema here, for example, for Coinbase, we see a little bit of what I was talking about earlier, about how we define uh, complex data structures. So, um, so we basically have a unified schema. Uh, all messages come in as package headers. Um, and then we, have, we define a wide variety of different types of messages, L2 entries, book resets, you know, all sorts of different fields that, that we have defined for our data connectors. This allows you to basically take in market data from anywhere, normalize it, process it, and show, a, uh, and, and show this, uh, you know, process this data, basically. So let's take a look at our BTC USD stream, for example. And actually, let me click on monitor mode so I can show you how this data comes in in real time. You know, millisecond timestamps, every 400 or so milliseconds, we see a new message come in. Each message looks a little bit like this. Um, it'll show you, you know, uh, this is uh, a, an, an update to basically show you the most recent uh, Let's see, actually, let me get, find a better example. Find a, uh, let me find an L2 entry update, here we go. So this message basically says that now, um, you know, in, in the 19th level of the book, we have a new ask um, with this price and this size. We aggregate all these messages and publish them out into the stream. And you can see all of them Let's, uh, let's just take a look at our chart for BTC USD, and I'll talk a little bit about um, how this relates to our moving window concept. So, uh, and let me just save for the last, oops, sorry, the last five minutes. So, this is the data we have collected over the last five minutes for Coinbase, for Bitcoin Tether. Um, we see each discrete message in the book, and with our moving window concept, you can zoom in to any period of, of time and select the, uh, select the time range to view it discreetly. Um, for some reason, you know what, let's do this another way. Um, in addition to this, to this chart, we also can display this data in the form of an order book. So if you've, uh, let's see. And let me actually add, uh, let me add Coinbase and let me add Kraken and I'll show you guys um, how this looks side by side. So right now, this is the real time price of Bitcoin Tether coming in from Coinbase and from Kraken. So, um, you know, all those tens of thousands of messages that, that come in every, um, you know, over, over a time interval, we process it and we show you the order book um, as it is in real time. And, you know, you can add as, as I mentioned, TimeBase can process millions of messages per second, so you can aggregate from however many venues you want. Um, finally, the last thing I want to show you about, uh, about the web admin is our uh, query language. Um, so if I select any of these streams and hit query, I'm brought to this query engine. And here's an example of, of a query just to get me the BBO. Uh, on both sides of the book. So I can either run this on the historical data set or I can run it in live mode, which 
should update in real time. Give me a second. Yeah, so you can see that this query, uh, you know, works over the historical data set, but it also can can update in real time to show you the bids and asks uh, as they change over a period of time. So that's uh, that's the time-based web admin. If you have any questions, please uh, please let me know. Otherwise, we'll. Uh, We'll move on to our um, our integrations with Grafana and Jupyter Hub. Okay, no questions. All right, let's go to our um, our Grafana integration. So, as I said, um, the the reason I that we built these uh, integrations. These are just examples of how you can take time-based data from the web admin and use it in your own use it with. In, in conjunction with or build your own um, web data uh, you know, visualization tools or analysis tools, whatever you want. This is all built on top of, of our APIs. So uh, we built a dashboard. Um, let's just select uh, stream we know has good data. Let me do Coinbase. Let me do BTC Tether. And again, with the moving window concept, um, right now we've got the last hour. Because I've only been running it for a few minutes, it might look a little strange. Uh, so let me just select the last five minutes. And let me, let me tell it to update every say, five seconds. So here, you know, we, we use Grafana to, uh, again, calculate the uh, current bid, current ask, uh, and various little indicators, you know, Bollinger Bands, average price, we use Grafana's uh, tools to design these. Not quite sure why the bars are not displaying as I normally expect them to, um, but, you know, you can see that they still do relate to um, the current bid and ask. And finally, you can see uh, the frequency of trades that have occurred over this time period. Um, let's see if maybe Kraken has, has better data. Hmm. Well, either way, I guess, yeah, that's a little bit better, I guess. But um, the point is, Grafana's APIs can be used to uh, to work with this, so um, yeah, that just shows one quick example. Um, you know, another just really quick example of our uh, APIs will work with um, with Jupyter Notebook. Um, this is an example of our Python APIs. Um, Python APIs used with Jupyter's visualization tools. Um, this is our, uh, you know, it, it uses our, our Python, uh, Python APIs and can be used to construct order books or whatever visualization tools you have. Um, so that's all the time I have for now. Um, but please don't hesitate to, uh, to take a look at the resources I shared in the presentation and reach out to me or anyone else from the Real-Time Computing Lab team if you have any further questions. Thank you very much.